Okay, moving on with physics. Now, I'm not going to sound like your high school teacher and run through the importance of physics, but you're going to need physics for objects to be able to interact with one, one another. More importantly, you're going to need uh, what are called colliders, which allow objects to inter interact with one another. Now, up to this point, we haven't been using physics and um, basically any object or character or whatever um, would normally just pass through our splines because there are no colliders associated with those splines. So to, to use those colliders, what we'd need to do is go down to this physics and we have two choices. We have a box and we have a mesh collider and they're used slightly differently. So if you were to use the box collider, we can go ahead and um, just click on it. Now we won't see anything happen, but don't worry about that right now. I'm going to just continue explaining. Now you're going to want to use Box Collider, for example, if your object is maybe hollow and there's going to be another object bounce, bouncing around maybe inside of this object. Um, think of maybe like some type of tunnel of some sort. Or uh, maybe if you have just a free line and you want um, an object to just run over it. Imagine maybe like a rope or something like that. So those are the two instances. Um, uh, there might be a few others, but just the, off the top of my head that you would want to use uh, box colliders with. Normally, uh, for performance reasons and um, so on, it's just better to use uh, mesh colliders. Uh, but for now, we're just going to go and do a run through um, the box physics. So you'll notice that nothing really happened. And the reason that nothing happened is because um, box colliders by default are set up to be created when Unity is run. So if I come in closer, you'll notice nothing has really happened even though I have physics on. But when I actually play, you'll notice that these little green lines have uh, popped up on the scene. Now that's kind of hard to see still, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change our axis uh, so we can look at these physics. So here we go here. There we go. I know we're behind the object, but that's okay, just as long as uh, we can pay attention to these um, colliders. So uh, I'm going to turn this off and notice that it goes away. So uh, what can you do to be able to uh, use these um, or tweak these colliders without them, without you having to run the program? Because uh, if you've ever used uh, Unity before, you'll know that if you have uh, the program running and you make changes, the second you stop it, all your changes will be gone. So um, using this is good for testing, but it won't keep your settings. So instead, what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to choose this down here, which is uh, physics create an editor. So all you need to do is um, just check this box off, and you'll notice that they come back. So now you can work uh, with this box collider and tweak it um, without the program running. So um, just know when you're working with these, you're um, with colliders um, or physics. You're it's it's kind of performance intensive, so your computer will will feel it, especially uh, once you start increasing these values here. So working our way down from the top, um, split control. You'll just see exactly what it does. Now it will increase the um, basically the quality of of that. Uh, edge. So um, the lower um, the lower the number, the more boxy um, it is around this object, uh, but the better the performance. The higher, the more accurate the collisions are going to be when this uh, blob interacts with other objects, but you're going to take a performance hit. So you're, it's, it's a kind of up to you to tweak that number. I believe uh, the default was 32, but something around there um, is the normal, uh, what you're going to want to use. So now uh, further down, we have the Z depth. So if we just drag this, you'll see what's happening. And that is pretty much um, how far it goes um, into and out of the the Z axis. Um, this is pretty straightforward. Um, there really doesn't you don't need too much more explaining uh, explanation behind that. So um, the offset is a let's let's move um, 
Let's move back to the front so you can see the offset. I'll bring this a little closer. So the offset controls where this collider is. For example, you might want to tweak this offset so that a collision looks accurate. It, it might be colliding too high or too low, or maybe you don't want the collisions to be right on the edge, but you want them to be um, further in or, or, or before they even collide with the object. Um, so it all depends on your situation. So that's what that offset does. Now, uh, something that's specific to box colliders is this normals depth, with which pretty much does what you see here. It affects um, the depth of these and how they come in. So it's kind of like this offs offset depth from the outside is being adjusted. This normal uh, depth is uh, changing what's what's on the inside. Um, so. Further down, we aren't really going to go over materials, but just know that materials are ways, um, it's, it's something that's within unity on how a certain objects interact with surfaces. For example, I can make this material icy and there's going to be different effects with how objects are versus if it was um, some other type of material. So one might be more slick while something else might be more rough. But that's where you would assign that material here. And we've already discussed create an ed editor. So that's pretty much box, collider, uh, box colliders. Now uh, when uh, we can go and um, if we turn this off you'll notice that it goes away. Um, if we go now to mesh collider <coughs> you'll see uh, we have uh, the mesh collider um, showing up when we have it checked off and you'll also notice that uh, if if this is not checked off or on it's still going to show up and also that if uh, the one key thing to remember is that if you don't want this collider and you turn this off for example notice that it's still there this is just a a little um, problem that's within Unity. So if you accidentally uh, click on this me mesh collider and it's created, uh, you're not going to be able to just uh, check it off like you did the um, box collider and it, and it automatically goes away. You need to manually remove this. So to manually remove this, all you would need to do is just go click on the object, which we already have selected, and here's the mesh collider right here. So you can just click here, you can right click, I believe you can click uh, left click here as well, just choose remove component and you'll notice that uh, the mesh collider is gone. So let's just go ahead and bring the mesh collider back <coughs> and uh, we really don't need to um, discuss these um, split count and Z depth normal offset we've already discussed them they're similar to how uh, they were on box, um, box collider as well uh, just know that um, if you can, it's preferred to use Mesh Collider just because of uh, performance uh, and um, quality. So um, if you can, this is the preferred method to use. Now the, we'll skip over material and create an editor. We've already seen that. So what we're going to want to pay attention to is this uh, physics convex. Now uh, what this means is um, usually two mesh colliders they can't collide with each other and a mesh collider usually can collide with some type of primitive object, a, a primitive collider. Um, so if you if you need two meshes, two mesh colliders to interact with one another you're going to have to mark one of those as um, uh, convex and what you do you, you kind of see this little thing it's kind of gotten enclosed off but having this checked off now allows uh, two mesh colliders to collide with one another so um, that's pretty much it for physics and um, there's some things um, down here general we will be continuing on and discussing those and working our way down